Work has begun on the 339-mile Champlain-Hudson Power Express transmission line that's going to take power from hydropower from Quebec into New York City. So I'm going to talk to Professor uh, Pierre-Olivier Pinot, who is the Chair in Energy Sector Management at HEC Montreal. Welcome to the interview, Pierre-Olivier. Hi, how are you? Well, I'm just fine, thank you. Now, this, I I think I interviewed you about this once before, maybe it was last year, and this is a very controversial line. It it, it was going through some uh, some wilderness in uh, places like Vermont and Maine, if I'm not mistaken. And and how did they finally resolve those uh, complaints? So there were, you know there wasn't any opposition. They could go ahead. So actually, you you may you may be confused with the other line. Uh that Hydro-Quebec is trying to build to Massachusetts that was initially supposed to go through New Hampshire and now it's uh, the plan is to go through Maine. There was a referendum in Maine that rejected the line, but now it seems that they can go ahead. That line was much less controversial. This line is from uh, Quebec going directly through the state of New York to New York City. And it's been approved actually for the last 10 years. Uh, the the all the regulatory approvals were provided and it's not controversial it's much less controversial there are some controversies but it's less much less controversial because it's going uh underwater uh through lake champlain and then underground along the railway towards new york city so uh nobody will see the line so you know in a way it, it helps making it more acceptable uh, although people did complain in some people did complain in New York because of course there's a cost to it and some people have to pay and and you know people don't long, like to pay and people in New York think they can do all by themselves uh, and they oppose uh, imports from other places so so there are some controversies around these but not around the line itself. Well, actually, I'm glad I made that mistake because now we can compare the the two projects, yes. and, the, and the big one that seems to uh, make a difference is the buried cable. Yes, and I and I know that adds tremendous cost uh, to it. So, was were were buried transmission cables part of the Quebec to New York project, the the uh, Champlain Hudson? project uh, or were they added later in response no, to from concerns? the beginning that project developed by tdi uh was a, a, a buried uh, line uh, that basically doubled more more or less doubled the cost that uh, compared to a traditional line um but yes it makes it much more acceptable and given the value of the project, you know, you go directly into New York City where electricity prices are extremely high, then, you know, that justifies uh, the project. It it could have been justified uh, much earlier if uh, electricity prices didn't collapse as they did uh, due to shale gas, you know, after uh, 2008, um, you know, electric prices went down with uh, low natural gas prices. But that project was designed for trading uh, between Quebec and New York City at a time where everyone thought uh, uh, natural gas prices would be high. Given the low prices, the project was shelved for many years. And only now, with a renewed interest in uh, in uh, greening the New York grid and the extremely ambitious goals that New York State has uh, for decarbonization, then only under this this new context, uh, such line makes sense now. Now, is there any chance that the other line from Quebec to to Massachusetts, that uh, because I know there's been suggestions on that project. Uh, that uh, the cable be buried, but are the are the, are the economics just too great uh, to allow that to happen? I I think in, uh, now, given the current status and and desire of uh, Massachusetts to to decarbonize, it's the economics wouldn't work because although they 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 want to decarbonize, they may not be ready to. Pay the 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 slightly higher price of burying the line. They may think you know alternatives will be cheaper. We will have to wait until they realize the alternatives are not cheaper uh, to basically be be willing to pay the higher cost. But I don't think the public in the U.S. now is ready for the higher cost. They have to face much higher cost for the alternatives uh, before accepting to pay uh, the the higher uh, buried lines. Sure. 
Um, let's talk about New York's approach to this, and and this comes in the in the context of the Champlain Hudson uh, line. And that is New York uh, was planning to retire some coal plants, uh, wants to electrify buildings with heat pumps, wants to electrify transportation with electric vehicles. Kind of sounds a little bit like California's aggressive approach, which then left them short of power. And they've had a not so they, they got through this summer. OK, but in the previous summer, they had had some blackouts. Uh, was there apparently the, the New York independent system operator warned that the way the state was going, were it not for the imports from Quebec, it could leave them dangerously short of power. Uh, yes, it, it's not so much the coal power plants that have been basically shut down, you know, along the last 10 years. It's really the nuclear power plants that are uh, being phased out in New York. So that is creating a, a big hole in their supply. And uh, yes, the, that power line is needed to to basically make sure they have enough power um and especially since since their their renewable power the offshore wind that the that new york state is planning is is far from being online you know they're planning they will start some you know first block in in the next years uh but before they get the, their 9000 megawatt of offshore wind that they're planning for then you know there will be a long time before that and uh, given the rising uh, prices of uh, of carbon in 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 the Reggie region, uh, and and the higher price of natural gas and the shutting down of nuclear power plants, yes, this power was extremely needed, especially since New York City uh, is is in need of uh, of a big amount of power, and and they are they, they do have ambitious goals in terms of decarbonization. Now, Pierre Olivier, I want to kind of back up a little bit here. Um, uh, you know, there's been a debate. I, I know I've, I've done some interviews with economists uh, and, and there's some discussion around what is the value of a megawatt of electricity? And the argument goes that a, a megawatt uh, hour of dispatchable power, like hydro or coal or whatever, has roughly three times the value of intermittent power, like, say, wind or solar. And the argument for, is further made that hydro power because uh, it can basically act like a big battery for intermittent power. So when you're making lots of solar and wind, you cut back the, the water that goes through the dam, you back that up in your reservoir. And then when you need, when the, the wind's not blowing and the sun's not shining, then you release that and you make the electricity and that's how you balance the grid. And that, and it seems like storing, uh, selling a megawatt of hour of electricity, using it as a battery is a higher value and yet this project is just, you know, it's a typical, we're going to sell it into consumers at whatever the, the going rate is. Should we be seeing in Canada more east-west trade so that we can start to decarbonize Ontario? Quebec can help uh, Ontario, BC and Manitoba can help Alberta and Saskatchewan to do that. And it seems like this is not the best use of Quebec's hydropower. Uh, what's your take on that argument? Um. Well, you know, you you got the logic right. Uh, now, in so so basically, although Hydro Quebec is making a good profit on 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 the electricity they're selling, there it's really an export project to New York now. Uh, so they they are not planning on balancing the wind in New York, but in the future, that line once built could well could of course be used for uh, by direction and and importing uh, a surplus wind to Quebec and and then balancing uh, the the supply in in the U in in New York so that that's a, the key aspect of the project is the long term flexibility it brings um so but but bef because it wasn't sold under these terms it's probably you know the 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 deal New York got is probably extremely cheap because the the real value of the hydropower Quebec is selling the firm power they sell renewable firm power has much more value than the price the Americans are paying. So, uh, but the market is not yet recognizing the value of firm renewable power and the balancing opportunities that that offers. Um, and it's because the market is not recognizing that that we don't see what you what you've been mentioning. It's because you know we don't recognize the balancing value of hydropower that uh, Ontario isn't willing to look at these options, and then Alberta isn't willing to look at these options. 
Then there's also the fact that uh, power producers within Alberta and within Ontario, they want to keep their own business. Uh, they want to add storage because, you know, if they build storage on their own, then basically they can be paid for that. Uh, and they want to increase their the value of their own business. And whatever cheaper solution can be made with neighbors, uh, that would be lost businesses for them. So... So we see, you know, a lack of vision from government. Uh, the market doesn't realize the the value of hydropower, and those who realize that, like basically, the the incumbents uh, in 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 some provinces, they do as much as they can in terms of lobby to prevent uh, more east-west interconnections across Canada. But definitely, there is a lot of value in um, in 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 these uh, east-west interconnections. But we would have to to recognize this value to you know to basically convince Manitoba Hydro, BC Hydro, Hydro Quebec that then uh, there is a market. Then there would have to there would have some contracts that have to be that would have to be signed, and and politicians are not yet ready to uh, for this kind of of discussions. Yeah, I can see your point. I mean, that's certainly the politicians aren't ready. The utilities aren't ready. The regulators aren't ready. In fact, you know, Canadians aren't even having this discussion. So uh, here we sit uh, without a strategy and without the, the proper policy framework and regula regulatory framework. And I imagine if I interview you 10 years from now, things might be a little different. At least we would hope they would be. Yes. Well, look, uh, Pierre Olivier, thank you very much for this. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much, Markham. Have a good day.